Sickle cell disease is a genetic blood disorder characterized by the red blood cells deforming into a sickle shape. The bone marrow tries to make red blood cells to make up for the loss but cannot keep up, thus causing anemia. It is a hereditary disease which is carried by both parents having the sickle cell gene whereby at each pregnancy there is a 25% chance of the child getting the disease. It is the most common genetic disorder in Uganda according to recent statistics. One of my favorite songs is Life is a Flower by Ace of Bass. Somebody that has sickle cell disease in Uganda would disagree with me and probably opt for the late Lucky Dube's song, Born to Suffer, because that is what it seems to be for them. Besides having major health issues to deal with every day of their lives, society discriminates against these people because of the stereotyped kind of thinking that people have about the sickle cell disease. Today, Life Stories brings you the lives of people with sickle cell disease, but also get to know the truth about sickle cells from the experts. It is all in the show today, and I welcome you. My name is Justine, your host, and this is Life Stories. In her early teen years, Jacinta started experiencing fatigue and extreme pain. It was worsened by attacks whose cause was unclear to her parents. A blood test in the hospital revealed that Jacinta had sickle cell disease. Jacinta, how old are you? I'm 29 years old. Yes, um, because I, this, this kind of thinking that people with sickle cells uh, over the sickle cell disease, do not live for long. I've had it too, and you're 29 years old. So, what is the truth about the age factor vis-a-vis -vis sickle cell disease? Um, sickle cell does not have an age factor. Like when you clock 10, you go on. No, but it all comes up to the management. Previously, sicklers would die at that because we never had, there was no information and even the management is very poor. It's very, very poor. So, but sickle cell does not have an age limit. Like if you're a sickler, you have to live up to 10, up to 18, 14. If you get to know sickle cell disease in depth, then you learn how to manage because we have trigger factors, we have things which bring us this pain. And not all the, all the things can cause you this pain. So it's, it's you to study your body. If you have a child, the parents have to learn that kid and know what can cause pain and what cannot cause pain. And if the pain comes, what do you do? Do you wait to the 11th hour to take the person to hospital? No. If you wait to the 11th hour, then your child will die as, as young as three months and whatever age. Yeah. Jacinta's health deteriorated by the day and her parents were filled with fear. They knew that they had to do something to save their daughter's life. Jacinta, what have been the negative experiences you've had in your life due to sickle cell disease? I had one worst one, that was when I was in S4. After my, my, my uncles and other relatives, since they also had this belief of sicklers die at that kind of age, they, they were like, I should not continue with going back to school. I should not go back to school, I should stay home, learn tailoring, and you know, it is something that I can stitch clothes, and then when I'm sick, I keep it, uh, I close up. They, they think, they thought I, it was better for me to do something which is light and s stressless, but to me, that was really, really bad. And it's not only in my family. Most sicklers are not taken to school, they're not allowed to, to, to go as far as they want simply because they are sick, but we can do much better 
we can we can do anything like any other normal person with all sickle cell disease. So I don't encourage that. I don't encourage that. Let other factors hinder somebody from studying or doing whatever they want to do, but not not because of sickle cell disease. Was your family supportive? Generally, yeah, my family was very supportive, but mm -hmm. on the other hand, they were very protect protective. They are very, very protective. They always wanted to close me in a certain cage. You know, if people have a party, they make sure I go to bed early. I don't do much work. Every time someone wants to offer to do something for me, you know, but. As I grew up, I realized that was a very negative protection, which is not good. So Jacinta, what worries you most about sickle cell disease? Uh, what worries me most about sickle cell disease is um, the management. When you get an attack, you're not sure. You're not sure whether you survive it or not. And, and unfortunately, in our hospitals, the doctors take it so lightly. They, they take it so lightly and uh, some look at it as, you know, you're supposed to, to have died or it's normal for a sickler to die, that kind of thing. So they, they, at times you find that even the nurses don't put in enough effort to help you recover. You know? The pain that Jacinta experienced was overwhelming. Her body hurt so bad, and hospitals and pills became her daily bread. Jacinta explains that sickle cell disease is worse than the seemingly most feared disease, HIV AIDS, yet this is unknown to many. Sickle cell, to me, in my own view, it's really worse than HIV AIDS. The, the only thing with sickle cell is a bit smart. It's not infectious. HIV is infectious. And if you look at the complications we go through as sickle cell patients, most times managing it is not possible. It's not possible. You can get forever deformed. So with, with HIV AIDS, we, there, there, are, there are things which you can handle. For example, if you have diarrhea, you can easily arrest that. And um, there are drugs out there now available. People live longer and people go on through their day-to-day -day kind of activities very well without interference. But for sickle cell disease, the complications we get are really severe. Due to, due to lack of oxygen in our red blood cells, you can find that you wake up today when you're blind. The cells have clogged up your sight. I one time woke up and I couldn't see. So I had to go through a lot of medication. I had to go through a lot of medication. I was in and out of hospital. Thank God eventually my, my sight recovered. Have you seen any cases where people are deformed? Like yes, very many cases we are deformed. We get bone degenerations. Your bones, especially the hip and the shoulders, they just start wearing out. And uh, to, to replace, to, to work on that, you need a lot of millions to do total hip replacement, which total hip replacements in most cases at times does not turn out to be successful. So you end up from a walking person to a wheelchair. We are so prone to stroke. You can get a stroke any minute. Any crisis which comes can lead you to a, to a stroke. Any crisis which comes can lead to internal death organs. So what affects me may not affect you or the other person. So for example, me, coldness does not affect me so much maybe to some extent but it's, it's not something which I'll, I'll really have that if i have if i feel cold i'll get an, an attack but when it comes to malaria and i don't manage it there i'm very sure a hundred percent sure that i'm heading for a demission if i'm so stressed up then i'm a hundred percent sure that i'm heading for Admission. So I have to always, I have to sleep under the net, take my weekly chloroquine tablets. When I have any signs of malaria, I run and do my malaria test 
and I treat it fully before it triggers off the pain. If I'm stressed, I really try to divert my mind because if I don't do it very fast, I know that within the next 24 hours, I'm in hospital. But to some people, majority, majority the coldness affects them. Like right now is cold, cold season. Most of them are very sick. Actually, sometime early this year, I went to hospital. There was a time it was over raining. So I asked the nurse, do you have any sick class around the ward that was in ward 4B? And she's like, oh, don't you know that this is, that they are on market during this kind of season. So it's like you get so many people sick when it is cold. But if they had the information, proper information, you keep warm, take warm tea, because you're supposed to take plenty of fluids every day. Someone my age should take five liters of fluids every day. That also helps in preventing crisis. But you find that someone is cold and coldness affects you, you're not aware of that, you keep on drinking cold water. So when it's cold and coldness affects you, take warm water, keep warm, if it's extremely cold, maybe ask off, ask for off at work or even at school. The life of a sickle cell patient is horrible. One is always sick, vulnerable, but also stigmatized as society has all sorts of illusions about the disease. How should schools and parents you know, manage their children when it comes to sickle cell disease? I think schools, schools should, should always talk to, to sicklers, mm. give them time to rest if they don't feel fine, and help them catch up with the rest when they are not in class. Mm. Parents, you need to know your children. Mm. You need to know what affects them and what does not affect them. And they have to be very supportive, not in that negative way of overprotecting somebody mm -hmm. in the name of, of caring for somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Jacinta, we found you in office in the Sickle Cell Information and Management Center. What is this and what's it about? Sickle Cell and Management Center is uh, say not such a young organization, but uh, we, uh, we decided to come up with this organization because we realize there's a gap in sickle cell management and more so information. There is no information out there. Even if you want to get the information, there's no way you can go and get the information from. So because of that, we decided to put up SIM Center to help in giving the information to the public and uh, whoever would, can need information. Yeah. How can somebody make this easier for you, especially with the organization, the Sickle Cell Information and Management Center? Everybody should come up and, 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 and support SIM, should come up and spread this word that sicklers are there and we're dying silently without anyone, you know, looking back, without anyone looking back, you know. They say people of malaria suffer, I mean, die of, uh, die of anemia, lack of blood. But I want to tell you in this country that people who need blood most are people with sickle cell disease. We need blood than any other person. They always keep saying mothers die of, uh, you know, anemia due to birth and so on. How about me, whose bone marrow cannot produce produces red blood cells with a very short lifespan. So most times of my life, I'm anemic. Mm. How, I'm how, anemic. how long, uh, how, what is the lifespan? The lifespan is between 10 to 14 days. And yet for a normal person, it's supposed to be to live for 120 days, four months. Mine takes two weeks. So the rest of the time, I don't have enough blood. So you see the eyes are getting yellow. Your urine is yellow. Some people, even the skin turns to be yellowish. It's just because of that deformity in the bone marrow. So people should come up and support sicklers. Don't, don't, don't stigmatize us. Give us, give us space to, to, to breathe. We are very normal people. And sickle cell is smart. It doesn't, it's not uh, infectious. 
they can transfuse you with my blood but you not get it is not is not sexually transmitted so don't stigmatize sea clouds and you're comfortable with the title sea club you've used it <laughs> quite a lot yes i've used it quite a lot because it is the it is how we are known out there but in my personal view i think it's very rude and it's not good it's just like uh, someone have a, suffering from HIV AIDS and the doctor comes and asks you are you HIV AIDS or are you HIV I think it is for me I'm not comfortable with that but because everybody calls us and knows us as sick class you know for me I would really wish that to be changed I wish yeah I wish I wish the medical prof professions and the public should find something else but to uh, call me a sickla you know i'm not a sickla i'm called jacinta but i suffer from sickle cell disease you know we just heard from jacinta achen jacinta has the sickle cell disease herself and having suffered the stigma that is attached to people with the sickle cell disease she and a few other people formed the sickle cell information in management center that has its offices in Tinder. So if you have any help to offer this particular group in this very viable cause of giving us this important information and helping people out there with the sickle cell disease, come to NTV Uganda, Kampala Serena Hotel or call the numbers below. You know that when it comes to putting a smile on somebody's face, anything counts. So you're very welcome. You're still watching Life Stories. Thank you for being a part of the show. And we return shortly after the break. We'll be right back.